to Dean Hutchins, who all here assembled would agree with me, is still wrapped in silk. To our trustees, faculty, staff, family, friends, and above all, to you, our 2022 law school graduates. Thanks for giving me a seat and the best seat in the house. I've hit the lottery. Let us pray. O thou who is known by many names and answers to them all, we thank you for these graduates. You are not unknown to them. You are multilingual and non-binary. They have called out and someone and something has answered. Some have called upon you using the language of hope and not just the pretty words of prayer. And some have used some other choice words. It is evident today, though, that you have heard them because here we are, graduation day. And we say thank you. We give thanks for those who have stood with our graduates, not in judgment, but in true support. Thanks for those who picked up and watched children, loaned their computer and or Wi-Fi. Thanks for those who encouraged us when we felt like giving up, dropping out, and closing down our social media accounts. We give thanks for their journey, the journey that has taken them from thought to dream to application to acceptance to enrollment to graduation and now to celebration. Take them down to bar exam. to interviews, to clerkship for that first J-O-B, and our way to partner and Chief Justice. I pray that as those who are preparing to study for the bar, that you will imbue them with the spirit and determination that will cause them to reject the notion that their race, sexual orientation, or any pre-existing social factor would bar them from success in life. We pray that you will widen the narrow vision of justices and judges, that as they look for potential clerks, that they will consider not only those who travel from Back Bay, North Station, and South Station in Boston, but also those who travel from Van Ness, UDC, Anacostia, and even Shaw Howard. For the greatest advocates for people come from forgotten and overlooked communities. And finally, we commit ourselves to practicing law promoting justice, and changing lives. And no leak will deter us. We stand for the protection of our civil rights, voting rights, reproductive rights, due process, and privacy. Hear our plea and consider our case. In the name of the one whose number is still one that we know by heart, in that name, amen. Good afternoon. So I am Renee Hutchins, and I have the distinct honor of serving as the dean of this phenomenal institution. I see you, class of 2022. <laughs> I want to recognize the faculty who are seated on the stage behind me and the staff who are working behind the scenes. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you have done to bring this class to this moment. I know it's hot, y'all, but bear with us. We're going to get y'all in and out of here in 90 minutes. Um, I want to thank Reverend Bowen for joining us. I also want to recognize the Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Lawrence Potter, the members of the University Board of Trustees, my fellow university deans, the members of the Law School's Foundation Board, our honored speaker, James McMillan, and all the family, friends, and honored guests who are with us today. In addition to the traditional challenges of successfully completing law school, y'all have weathered remote learning, lockdowns, floods, emergency drills, 
but you did not let any of it deter you from your goal, earning your JDs. Let's give a round of applause for the most resilient class I have ever seen. The law school is also celebrating its 50th anniversary, and so I want to recognize one very special additional guest. Oh, you may be seated, graduates. I am so sorry. Everybody else sat down behind you. I was looking at y'all. Thank you, Professor Cohen. Thank you. Um, I want to recognize one additional guest. We are joined today by Nancy Shia, who is a graduate of our inaugural class. Nancy, give a wave. Class of 1975, thank you for being here. And now it is my honor to introduce you to one of the hardest working graduates I know. Jamal Bailey is the president of the Student Bar Association and after passing the bar this summer, I am claiming it for him. He will join the New York office of Paul Weiss as a first year associate, Jamal. Wow, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Woo! Need a little bit more than that. Need a little bit more than that. Family, friends, colleagues, and esteemed guests, thank you for taking the time and attending this momentous occasion, this tremendous milestone for me and my classmates. My name is Jamal Brian Bailey a graduating JD student from Prince George's County, Maryland. This academic year, I had the honor and privilege of serving as the Law School Student Bar Association President, Managing Editor of the UDC Law Review, and Chair of the Washington Bar Association's Board, Law Student Division Board, stay corrected, my apologies. <laughs> As I reflect on the past three years and the memories made here on campus, at home remote, and in the law library, the word resilience comes to mind. The resilience this graduating class has demonstrated since day one truly reflects what we've all come to know as the UDC law spirit. Our class was the last one to do the law and justice seminar and the celebratory pizza party at Dr. Khan's house at the end of orientation. Our class saw the beginnings of a global pandemic when we realized people weren't just catching the common cold. Our class learned the rules against perpetuities behind a Zoom screen. Our class saw an outgoing presidential administration that tested the very fiber of who we claim to be as Americans. Our class saw a successful return to building after almost two years of remote learning. Many of our friends and colleagues and family had significant life changes during that time and we always made it work. And if that doesn't excite you, we all survived that six hour legal bar success final. <laughs> Look, by points. It was resilience when this graduating class made the affirmative decision to change the narrative of what it means to be UDC law. I stood next to the graduates here today and Dean Hutchins and many of our UDC law faculty as we took the streets in the wake of the George Floyd murder. I watched as this class created spaces to celebrate each other's accomplishments and provide a shoulder to lean on whenever a colleague was in need. I'm proud to walk the stage today with some of UDC's best and brightest. A special thank you to the SBA team this year and everyone that contributed to our mission of, and everyone that contributed to our mission of introducing a new culture, one of excellence, one of engagement, one of investment in one another. To the class of 2022, serving as SBA president has been life changing. And I think that's all my time. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, James McMillan. 
James McMillan is an attorney, manager, and music industry executive who has worked behind the scenes helping to guide the successful careers, and no, he did not bring them with him, I am very mad about that, of artists including Too Short, Nelly, Paul Wall, The Justice League, Cool and Dre, Machine Gun Kelly, and many more. McMillan's love of music was in his blood. His grandparents toured with Nat King Cole. His uncle played drums for the Spinners, and he grew up with the OJ's kids. This isn't gonna mean anything to this class, but it's gonna mean something to your, pres your parents. <laughs> Gerald and Sean Levert. <laughs> McMillan got his start in the business in the early 1990s when he launched his first record label. Two years later, Cleveland native headed to law school to study entertainment law. After graduating in 1997, he practiced while continuing to remain engaged in the music business, dabbling in management and overseeing the careers of folks like Eight Ball and later Machine Gun Kelly. By 2017, McMillan was ready to put the full-time practice of law to the side to immerse himself fully in music. He signed a deal with Atlantic Records for his own label, Art of War, and signed his first acts, Why Be an Amir, Why Be an Almighty J, and Corday, who again are not here, and I'm very sad about that. <laughs> McMillan's vision is to help young people realize their dreams and become megastars in multiple areas, and that is a vision that I have to say aligns absolutely perfectly with my vision for all of you. James. Class of 2022, how y'all feeling? I'm honored to be here. I wanna start by saying thank you to Dean Renee McDonald Hutchins for the invitation to speak at this momentous occasion. The pressure to speak to all of you today is very real, but really this is truly an honor for me. To my fellow speakers, UDC educators, and the illustrious provost, Dr. Lawrence Potter, I know I'm in good company, so I want to say I'm humbled by the opportunity to share this moment and stage with all of you. But most importantly, I want to start by saying to the graduating class of 2022, the three L's of UDC Law School, you made it. Give yourself a round of applause. Look at each other, shake someone's hand, or hug them if you're comfortable. <laughs> Hey, this is the times we're in. This message I've been invited here to deliver is a heartfelt one, and just for you. For the next 20 or so minutes, I'm going to be honest with you to keep it 100% real, open and transparent, and hopefully it won't be 20 minutes. <laughs> when I started thinking on what I, James McMillan Esquire, and HBCU graduate could share with you today, I figured I would start with the, in the most obvious place, by telling you what I wish someone had told me. Now I know I may not know you personally, but I do know where you are at right now and how you're feeling right now, sitting in that seat, thinking about what comes next, thinking about a job, because those loans are about to get real, real, real quick. And of course, thinking about taking that bar exam. But before you get caught up in just thinking about what was and what is to come, I want you to take this time to breathe and congratulate yourself. You're here because you did this. You achieved this milestone. You studied. You read every case, maybe even three or four times. For me, that was property and the rule against perpetuities. <laughs> you have made your family, friends, and anyone who supported you on this dream extremely proud. You have given them joy and cause to celebrate. It's been a while for me since I've been in your seat, but you never forget how good this moment can feel graduating after three years of working so hard and wanting something so bad. So enjoy this. One of the reasons I know what it feels like to, to, to want something so badly is because I've had my fair share of challenges in pursuit of my dreams. For instance, I did law school twice. The first time was in 1991. I was 22 years old and fresh out of Hampton University when I started at Texas Southern University, Thurgood Marshall School of Law. Up until then, school had been relatively easy for me. I could pick up a book the night before an exam and still do well, but not this time. I flunked out. 
As some of you may know, after flunking out of an accredited law school, I couldn't, re I couldn't reapply to another accredited law school for two years. There I was with egg on my face, not knowing what to do next. It was the first time I had ever experienced a loss of that magnitude. I compounded my problems in 1993 when I caught a felony case in Virginia for possession of marijuana with intent to distribute. By the spring of 1994, my dream of becoming a lawyer was rapidly fading away. I was a law school failure and a convicted felon. If I was to ever realize my dream, I had to grow up, do some serious soul searching and self analysis. At that time, I was really immature. I wasn't taking myself seriously. I was distracted, doing way too much. On top of that, my plan of being the Jeff Bezos of weed was a bad plan. <laughs> despite, despite all my poor decisions and self-created obstacles, my dream of becoming a lawyer was something I just knew I couldn't give up on. It had been my dream since I was 11 years old. I was determined to make it happen, so I had to readjust my approach and try again. In the fall of 1994, I reapplied to Thurgood, explained my previous shortcomings to the dean, and was fortunate to be readmitted as a 1L. The second time I entered law school, I was hyper-focused and even more determined. I, knew, I now knew how much of a privilege it was and how fleeting it could be. Because of my own legal issues, I had a whole different respect for the law in this process. I was convicted. Conviction. A formal declaration that someone is guilty of a criminal offense made by the verdict of a jury or the decision of a judge in the court of law. Also conviction, a firmly held belief or opinion. It was that legal conviction that manifested itself into the personal conviction that I needed to make the vision for myself a real, as a lawyer a reality. See, when I was convicted of selling marijuana, that charge, that charge could have ended all of this for me. Then I was, a, at, at that time, I was a law school failure and a convicted felon, still hell bent on becoming a lawyer. It was my personal conviction for my dreams of becoming a lawyer that wouldn't allow me to quit. It drove me to reapply my skills I had retained during that, that failed year of law school to do my research. My research revealed that only New York and California would allow me to sit for the bar exam prior to conducting a background check for the moral character and fitness test. At the time, I had some good friends who were doing well for themselves practicing law in New York. So after graduating in 1997, I signed up to take the New York bar. And that July, that July studied my butt off, and I passed. But even though I had passed the bar, I was still afraid I wouldn't be admitted to practice. In fact, because of my felony conviction, my research told me that I likely wouldn't. You see, when I was sentenced in 1994, I was given three years of probation. My probation period didn't end until right before I graduated in 1997. In cases like mine, one of, the one of the factors that the moral character and fitness examiners consider is the amount of time that had passed since the applicant completed his sentence. When I graduated in 1997, I had just got off probation, and I was stuck with fear. I was scared to complete the moral character and fitness test necessary to become a lawyer. By 1998, I had moved from Houston to New York and found work as a law clerk at my friend's law office. There, I was given all of the responsibility of a lawyer with little to none of the financial reward. By 1999, I had my fill of being the law clerk and finally found the courage to write what my research told me may be a compelling statement to the bar concerning my transgressions. That July, I was called in for an interview. I was so nervous, I can't even explain it. I was fully prepared to walk out of that interview unsuccessful. But to my great surprise, the interviewer didn't cross-examine me like I expected. In fact, he only asked me one question. That was whether I had been practicing law without a license since passing the bar in 1997 and finally completing my application for admission in 1999. He went on to comment how in his years as an examiner, he had never come across a statement like mine. Finally, he said he thought I would be an excellent addition to the New York Bar, with one caveat. He made me promise to share my story with other people. Then he welcomed me to the New York Bar. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
That was over 20 years ago, and I'm still making good on that promise. So here I stand sharing my biggest failures, my history, and my journey, my moment of undoing with all of you. But since I'm standing here sharing, here, since I'm standing here sharing with you, I'm also proof that I was not undone, that I did not give up on myself, that my journey did not end, that that legal conviction back in 1994 would not rob me of the personal conviction that still guides me today. And now for that second definition, conviction, a firmly held belief or opinion. This kind of conviction is the good kind. Conviction is what got each one of you right here today. Standing, starting with the moment you took the, the LSAT and applied to law school, to now at the end of this, of this segment of the road. Conviction is also what will carry you and prepare you for the next step of your journey to success. I know there will be some people, some may even be your peers that will try to make you feel inferior because you graduated from an HBCU. That somehow you're not good enough or your education is questionable. I can tell you without a doubt, you are more than good. You are ready. You study the same law that they teach at Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Columbia, you name it. I say it again, you are more than good. You are ready. Make your most firmly held belief the belief in yourself. That needs to be your foundation. Having conviction in what you believe first and foremost yourself is what will give you strength and light on those dark days when things feel uncertain. Believing in yourself and trusting your training is how you will always be able to find your center, no matter what external forces are trying to rattle you or pull you off your path. From this day forward, your ambitions will grow. They will even expand in all directions. They may even change course entirely along the way. For me, I started out using Willie Gary and Johnny Cochran as the men I wanted to emulate my career after. In 1995, Johnny Cochran gave the most masterful closing argument that the world had ever seen in the O.J. Simpson trial. No matter what you feel about O.J., the statement, if it doesn't fit, was forever emblazoned in our memories thanks to Johnny's smooth delivery. Then there was Willie Gary, the giant killer, another HBCU law grad that had found so much success as a plaintiff's lawyer that he had his own fleet of private airplanes called the Wings of Justice. I saw them as my gold standard. But then I met Clive Davis, and I saw more of myself and what I could do with my career in him. He is a lawyer, and he is also a creative and a businessman. Seeing him and learning his journey gave me the inspiration to expand my vision of myself and pivot to music and entertainment. When my ambitions changed, my conviction changed. It wasn't about me. I wanted to help young people in their entertainment careers to steer and guide them in a way that I knew would set them up for success in the business. Seeing that potential in them and helping them realize it for themselves gave me more satisfaction than just money. It gave me purpose. That change in my conviction meant I couldn't be afraid to go with a new beginning, even when I didn't see a clear end. The entertainment business is unforgiving, ruthless at times, but it was in this world I saw myself, even with all the craziness. I had to remind myself not to lose sight of those standing with me and beside me. We all need those people because those are the people who will support your journey, whatever the crazy may be. So while you are convicted to your vision for yourself, know that you can never let yourself get too big or too self-absorbed to say thank you to those that love and support you and thank whatever God you believe in daily. No one that does it well does it alone. I want to say that one more time. No one that does it well does it alone. We all need our people. We all need our tribe to be there for us from the beginning to wherever this career you're about to embark on takes you. Don't be afraid to be defined by your conviction. Believe in something. Stand for something. Because conviction is more than a word. If you choose to embrace it, nurture it. It will give you purpose, strength, and power. I know you have it inside you. You've already been moving with it for the past three years of late night studying and exams. Conviction is what got you here. Now stay the course and keep going. The next moment you will need your conviction is in preparation for that bar exam. Yeah, you still got to do that. <laughs> in fact, I promised Dean Hutchins, I would, I would tell you that loud and clear. Pass that bar, y'all. 
Come on. But I already know that you will. So I'm going to leave you, leave you here with some words from Mark Twain, the famous American writer. The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. My challenge to you today is to consider this day of graduation as the first day you begin to find out your why. The world of law is waiting for each of you. We are here, to you, here for you, to welcome you, to make room for you, to guide you, to challenge you, and see what your conviction leads you to do. Congratulations, UDC Law Class of 2022. Isn't he awesome? <laughs> right? Um, I now have the pleasure of introducing another remarkably and deeply talented law student, Niara Houston. After passing the bar, after passing the bar this summer, I'm claiming it for all of you every single time I say your names. After passing the bar this summer, Ms. Houston is going to go and do justice in New York as an assistant district attorney in the Brooklyn DA's office. The day class speaker, Niara Houston. <laughs> Thank you, Dean Hutchins. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Y'all know. <laughs> good afternoon. My name is Niara Houston, and I am Vice President of the University of the District of Columbia David A. Clark School of Law Student Bar Association, and a member of the UDC Law Class of 2022. I am humbled and honored to speak before you today. First and foremost, to the Class of 2022, congratulations. Through all of the trials and tribulations these past three years, and in some cases four, we did it. And for that, you owe yourself a round of applause. If I may, I would like to personally thank my parents, grandparents, and 20 plus loved ones here with me today. I could not have done this without you. I would also like to thank our professors, faculty, and staff that have paved the way for us, poured into us, and pushed us to get here today. We owe you a tremendous debt of gratitude, as there are no words that can describe how appreciative we are of you. I don't know about y'all, but this moment is surreal. This is the day we have waited for. And for us first generation grads, despite every statistic, odd, voice, or weapon formed against us, we proceeded with our dream. And that is worth celebrating. <laughs> Although today marks the end of our law school journey, it is the beginning of our lives as social justice warriors. Through the challenges of COVID and injustice, I think our law school career was one that none of us imagined. We started out with only one full semester in person, just to return at the end of our final year. Pivoting to online instruction was certainly no easy task, but despite it all, we persisted. You persisted. Thinking back to the very beginning, I remember the first week of school at orientation. We sat in Law and Justice being reminded of how special UDC Law was and is by the late Dr. Khan. For many of us, we already knew. The uniqueness of UDC Law inspired us to be change agents. Having grown up during the birth of the Black Lives Matter movement, the death of Trayvon Martin sparked a decade of defining moments in history. But it also inspired us, a generation of law students, to go out and fight the system. And somewhere down the line, we will tell our children how we sat in class while some of those defining moments happened around us, that we marched for justice amid the devastating coronavirus pandemic, 
bearing witness to the tragic injustices of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Dante Wright, Ahmaud Aubrey, and countless others, all the while attempting to go about class as usual, trying to figure out how we could possibly remember all the intricate nuances of the law, knowing that that very same law does not afford us equal justice or freedom. But we soon realized that although the legal system was inherently unjust, it is invariably the most powerful mechanism to bring about justice. As my father would say, the pen is the most powerful weapon in the world. So I want to remind you that as we go out to practice law, promote justice, and change lives, we must carry on the torch and let everyone know that we are UDC law trained social justice warriors. And they are, we are unstoppable, unbreakable, and unshakable. I hope y'all know the best of UDC has yet to come. Congratulations, class of 2022. We did it. Dade County, this one is for you. Now, I have the pleasure of introducing my brother, Demarcus Freeman. Good afternoon, parents, friends, distinguished faculty, and graduates. I believe I speak for all of the class of 2022 when I say we didn't think this day would ever get here. It seems just like yesterday, we were all sitting on the fifth floor during first year orientation, and Professor Cohen was telling us how much fun this was gonna be. <laughs> While there were a lot of laughs over the last couple years, there were a lot of sleepless nights and stressful days. We survived contracts, two years in a virtual classroom, some of us had kids, got engaged, married, and we even witnessed the confirmation of the first female African-American Supreme Court Justice. And through all of that, your commitment to, to a fair justice system never wavered. The law is noble, but as many of us know, it is not perfect. It's good, but it's not always just. And my hope for us as we leave those doors one last time is that we speak up when something makes us uneasy, that we speak up when something feels wrong. This law school has trained us all to think like lawyers, but I hope as we leave, we do not forget to think like human beings. I hope that you all remain convicted in your beliefs, but remain humble enough to open your mind to other points of view. I hope that we all remember that experience is more valuable than eloquence, that we do not always equate logic with strength and emotion with weakness. I hope that each of us retains that inner current of idealism that in this climate may very well get us called naive or unrealistic. And when we are confronted by legal problems, we not only consider the law. Life is not simple, and the grace is in the gray area. As you leave today, I hope you all go on not only to be lawyers, but fighters, change makers, social justice warriors, artists imagining how things could be, and architects that create. I hope that you never let a day pass in which you forget how fortunate we are to have taken this journey together. In closing, I'd like to leave you all with two quotes by two very wise men. The first by young Jeezy. <laughs> Jeezy says, you only get one life. There is no sequel, so you can't take anything for granted. Lastly, one of my favorite professors, Professor Philip Lee.
Professor Lee reminds us that sometimes there is a difference between what is just and what is legal. To my fellow graduates, I thank you all for the honor of speaking today. Taking this journey with you has been one of the most remarkable experiences of my life. But before I take my seat, I challenge each of you to remain committed to UDC law. As a future alum, it is our responsibility to continue the legacy that Dr. Khan and so many before us set the foundation for. Commit to giving monthly to the Alumni Association, whether that's 10, 20, or $100. And in an effort to demonstrate our commitment to the future success of this academic institution, the class of 2022 would like to present the law school with a gift of $6,700. This represents a $100 commitment from each of the graduates. Dean, could you join us, please? Class of 2023, we want to see what you guys got. <laughs> the class of 2022 had the pleasure of selecting three classmates to honor with three named awards. Honorees, please approach the podium from stage left when your names are announced. The first award is the Judge Pryor Legacy Award. This award is given to a graduate who in keeping with the David A. Clark School of Law's mission has demonstrated academic excellence, has provided service to his or her community and student body, and has made a strong commitment to public service. The class of 2022 has selected Akeem Earl. As the recipient of the 2022 Judge Pryor Legacy Award. Akeem Earl is a Dean's Fellowship Scholarship recipient who maintained a 3.0 GPA throughout his law school career. He successfully competed on the UDC mock trial team two years in a row. In the 2019-2020 academic year, he served as a teaching assistant for lawyering process and a writing mentor for the UDC law student body. In addition, he served as the parliamentarian for the Student Bar Association and the director of communications for the Black Law Students Association. Akeem dedicated his internship experience to the public sector working for the Montgomery County State's Attorney's Office and with the Department of Justice. He balanced law school while working full time at the Office of the Attorney General for the District of Columbia as a paralegal specialist. He has been an aide to attorneys acting on behalf of the residents of DC. Upon graduation and passing the bar, <laughs> Akeem plans to work in the public sector as a prosecutor. Congratulations, Akeem. <laughs> the second award is the Edgar Khan Community Service Award. This award is given to a graduate who has demonstrated an exemplary commitment to community service by providing out outstanding leadership in his or her community in order to benefit others. This graduate's commitment is evidenced through the graduate's outside community service and or clinical experience. The class of 2022 has selected Morgan Peterson as the recipient of the 2022 Edgar Kahn Community Service Award. Morgan Peterson pursued law school because of her dedication and desire to serve her community and seek justice and fair treatment for everyone, regardless of income or race. She strives to strengthen relationships and empower communities to act against unfairness. She loves uplifting her community. 
not for the recognition, but because she always wants to help anyone in need. Morgan believes it is essential to give back to the community that has given her so much. She organized a diaper drive where UDC Law had the privilege of donating over 1,200 diapers to local families in need. Furthermore, she organized a UDC Law volunteer event at Bread for the City, where five law students packed and distributed hundreds of food bags to residents. In addition, she invested in her law school community by leading many informal study sessions to ensure the academic success of her classmates because she knows that she and her classmates will change the world. Following graduation and passing the bar, Morgan is headed to Alabama to work as a public defender. Congratulations, Morgan. <laughs> the final award is the Unsung Hero Award. This award is given to a graduate who has worked tirelessly behind the scenes to improve the law school and surrounding community. This graduate is always helping others but does not have an SBA leadership position. Despite their hard work, this graduate never seeks and rarely receives recognition for their kindness. The class of 2022 has selected Tatiana Hopkins as a recipient of the 2022 as a recipient of the 2022 Unsung Hero Award. Throughout her time at UDC Law, Tatiana Hopkins has attended classes at night after working full time. Sensitive to the challenges of her peers in the evening program, many of whom had jobs and familiar responsibilities. Tatiana has consistently demonstrated her willingness to assist her classmates in their academic pursuits. While in law school, Tatiana served as, served as notes editor of the UDC Law Review. She also completed an internship with the DC Court of Appeals under the supervision of the court's chief judge, Anna Blackburn Rigsby. Most recently, Tatiana worked for the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation as a law clerk in the Professional Liability and Financial Crimes Division. Congratulations, Tatiana. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lindsay Muir Harris, and I'm the Associate Dean of Clinical and Experiential Programs. I have the pleasure of announcing this year's Clinical Legal Education Association recip Award recipients. This is a national award. Honorees, again, should approach the podium from stage left when their names are announced. The first award is the CLIA Outstanding Externship Student Award. This award is given to a graduate who demonstrates excellence in externship fieldwork and thoughtful, self-reflective participation in the externship seminar. The clinical faculty have selected Nathan Jones. <laughs> As the recipient of the 2022, that's where we are, right? Um, CLIA Outstanding Externship Student Award. Nathan Jones, the Washington Post's first Freedom of Information Act, that's FOIA, director, and a recognized international expert on the 1983 Abel Archer nuclear war scare, completed an externship at the National Security Archives, a nonprofit research institution which uses the Freedom of Information Act to force the government to release previously secret historically important public records. He feels fortunate to have had such a fantastic learning experience conducting research and crafting briefs, um, including on civil rights cases and dangerous brushes with nuclear war. Nate's externship experience confirmed to him that he wants to use the skills he learned at UDC Law to litigate Freedom of Information Act lawsuits in the future.
Congratulations. Okay. This thing doesn't magically produce certificates, by the way. <laughs> uh, the second award this afternoon uh, in the clinical program is the CLIA Outstanding Clinical Student Award. This award is given to a graduate who exhibits excellence in clinical field work and thoughtful self-reflection participation in the clinical program. The clinical faculty have selected Jennifer Araujo. <laughs> as the recipient of the 2022 CLIA Outstanding Clinical Student Award. Participating in the General Practice Clinic and the Immigration and Human Rights Clinic. That's my one. Uh, Jennifer Araujo represented real clients and sharpened her written and oral advocacy skills. Through the General Practice Clinic, she worked on discovery and argued remotely before DC Superior Court. Jennifer also worked with a woman who had difficulty obtaining counsel in the past due to economic and language barriers as part of the Access to Justice Advice and Brief Services Project. Through the Immigration and Human Rights Clinic, she represented a young man afraid to return to his home country because of violence against LGBTQ individuals. Jennifer completed the asylum application, drafted his declaration, researched and wrote the legal brief. Although heartbreaking at times and painful for the client, it was a rewarding moment for her when he expressed sincere gratitude after reading his declaration. Jennifer's professors challenged her and always believed in her and the legal advocate she aspires to be. Okay, the last award is the Outstanding Clinical Team Award. This is an inaugural award, so first time ever, and is given to a team of graduates who've displayed excellence in clinical fieldwork collaboration. The clinical faculty have selected, and there are four names here, Francesca Bryce, <laughs> okay. Sarah Buskirk, <laughs> Azure Bowman, and Sophia Bolemian Spencer. These graduates are the recipients of the 2022 inaugural Outstanding Clinical Team Award. According to the Domestic Violence Legal Empowerment and Appeals Project, also known as DV Leap, this outstanding team of clinical legislative lawyers demonstrated, and I quote, energy, skills, creativity, and deep commitment to addressing the critical impacts of climate change on gender-based violence survivors. As vital partners, they advocated for local, national, and even international stakeholders to acknowledge climate justice for survivors. Francesca Bryce pitched the White House Gender Policy Council to address these needs in the U.S. National Action Plan to end gender-based violence. Azure Bowman amplified the unique experiences of indigenous survivors. Sarah Buskirk encouraged the UN Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women to address related stressors that imperil survivors' health and safety. With research support from Sophia Bolemian Spencer, their work helped others to realize that the law must do something about this overlooked reality. Before announcing the next round of awards, um, I want to give our keynote speaker an opportunity to come up and make a very exciting announcement. James. It's not that, y'all. It's not that. <laughs> it's not that. I'm not holding like that. 
sorry, brother, but get, but I but I got a little something. So, Dean Hutchins, um, there's a saying that uh, to match the frequency of the reality that you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. I don't think I could be more impressed with the class of 2022. I'm inspired by your courage, fortitude, and firebird spirit. And I'd like to match your energy by matching your class gift in support of, your, of the Bar Success Fund. <laughs> Let's see what the class of 2023 does. There you go, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you. You see that class of 2022? You see that? You see the good work that you did and how it inspires others. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Class of 2023, that's a challenge on the mat. So now to the awards. Um, each year we recognize some of the leading lights of the graduating class with Dean's Awards. So the students selected for this year are some, but by no means the only representatives of excellence in the law school that has um, that the law school has to claim in the class of 2022. So it pleases me greatly to declare their distinction as the three recipients of Dean's Cup Awards for service, scholarship, and practice. Honorees, please approach from stage left when I call your name. The first award is the Dean's Cup Award for service. This award is given to a graduate who has made a significant contribution to their community through their time, actions, talents, and dedication. The honoree serves as a role model to compassion and a desire to make the world a better place. I have selected Demarcus Freeman. The 2022 recipient of the Dean's Cup Award for Service. So DeMarcus's commitment to service extends beyond law school activities. Through his work with his fraternity, Phi Beta Sigma, DeMarcus has, <laughs> DeMarcus has participated in several fundraising activities aimed at raising funds for local nonprofits. During law school, he externed for Judge Gina Sims at the Southern District Court of Maryland and interned for the DC Superior Court while also working full time. DeMarcus organized and participated in a number of service-related activities, including partnering with Georgetown Law's Balsa to pack and deliver care packages to, unhoused the, to the unhoused, working closely with his cohorts to organize the diaper drive that you've heard about, serving as a student representative on the admissions committee, serving as a treasurer with the SBA, and volunteering with the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, pre preparing taxes for low-income DC residents. Congratulations. <laughs> The second award is the Dean's Cup Award for Scholarship. This award is conferred on a graduate whose academic performance demonstrates remarkable consistency at the highest levels of achievement. The award recognizes a student who has rewarded the institution through their performance in the classroom, who achieved on a level of excellence matched by the value of scholarship, and who has studied with intensity, motivated themselves and others, and genuinely celebrates learning in all aspects at its fullest. I have selected Darby Hickey as the recipient. <laughs> when when Darby joined UDC Law in 2019 as an evening student, she had a full-time job and a kid who we just heard from. Darby committed herself to academic excellence from the beginning, which involved many late nights and many sacrifices. Transferring to the day program brought even more intense work as Darby had back-to-back -back semesters with a 17 credit course load. Yet throughout, she stayed laser focused on learning course material thoroughly and that is reflected in her academic record. Darby has earned straight A's except for one B. Yeah. 
In addition to excelling in her coursework, Darby was half of the two-part team that won the 2022 DC Cup Moot Court Competition. After graduating, Darby is, I'm sorry, after graduating and passing the bar, Darby is going to clerk with the Honorable Shirley M. Watts on the Maryland Court of Appeals. Darby. The next award is the Dean's Cup Award for Practice. This award is given to a graduate who has performed over and above the standard expected of their role. The award recognizes a graduate who has elevated the clinical and practice-oriented mission of this law school through their good work. I have selected Dalali Tagadu. <laughs> Born in Monrovia, Liberia, and raised by her late father, Dalali grew up in Egypt, Syria, and Ghana before moving to the United States to pursue her dream of higher education. 23 years later, on February 24th, 2022, Dalali became a U.S. citizen. It was a tough journey, but her self-advocacy to stay in the U.S. has made her a better advocate for others. Dalali's international upbringing has taught her to approach difference and challenge as opportunities to create alliance and affect change. As an immigrant, she understands the plight of other immigrants and is committed to using her leadership to zealously advocate for other immigrants in the U.S. Congratulations, Dalali. The final award is the Richard H. Simsker Prize for Civil Rights Law. Thank you, Mike Casal. The award is given to a high-performing graduate of modest means who wants to work in the civil rights field. The donor has defined civil rights to include law which challenges discrimination based on race, religion, disability, sexual orientation, gender identity, and the full plan of panoply of all such classifications, as well as related work as on disability and voting rights. I have selected Tatiana Hopkins as the recipient of the Simser Award. Tatiana Hopkins has long been an advocate for social justice. As a reporter prior to law school, Tatiana graduated from Howard University in 2016 with a bachelor's degree in journalism. Tatiana was committed to covering the voices and issues of vulnerable communities. As a member of the black press, she covered the Flint, Michigan water crisis, the Hurricane Maria recovery efforts in Puerto Rico, and local DC community issues like affordable housing, gun violence, and health disparities. As a student in the UDC Law Youth Justice Clinic, she helped lead efforts to gather information about voting procedures in Georgia jails for incarcerated individuals who are eligible to vote and developed a guide for Virginia defense attorneys to protect their clients' right to vote. While working full time, Tatiana also served as the notes editor of the UDC Law Review, which aims to publish articles addressing legal issues of social concern and embodies the theme of community activism and service. I am pleased to also note that the Simsker Prize is accompanied by a $1,000 award. So with the special awards resolved, let us now turn to the moment that everybody is really here for. The presentation and hooding of the remarkable class of 2022. So the size and, size and um, color of the hood and the width of the velvet on the hood, this is the hood, 
represents the type of degree you have earned. So bachelor degrees, the hoods for those are the smallest. Master's degrees are in the middle. Doctoral degrees are the largest. The purple velvet inside of your hood represents the Juris Doctor, the professional degree for all lawyers. Please join me in welcoming to the stage, in order by row, the class of 2022 for the momentous occasion of the donning of the Juris Doctor hood. Jamal Brian Bailey. <laughs> Yuri Karina Amaya. Carolina Consuegra de Leon. Andrew Sebastian Jacobson. Tatiana Hilaire. <laughs> Kadian Townsend. Gael Bastian. <laughs> Wanjiko Muheri. Sarah Buskirk. <laughs> Sophia Rain Bolemian Spencer. Francesca Bryce. Good. <laughs> Margaret Cannon. Jennifer Araujo.
Tierra Copeland. Shazeb Jiwani. <laughs> Shada Shihade. Forrest Yang Lindelof. <laughs> Niara T. Houston. Asia Burwell. Tiffany Natasha Brooks. <laughs> Darby Hickey. Samantha Renee Carolina. <laughs> Emma Heard Sales. Jamie Adams. Malcolm Jones. <laughs> Cynthia Jacqueline Rollins. William Thomas Lowry. <laughs> Morgan Peterson. Morgan. 
Vincent Paratrovich. John Teal Hasty. Chizoba Kaga. James. Hey, <laughs> Maria Mason. Taylor. Cameron James Terry. Tracy Bodzo. <laughs> Tevya Sugarman. Mary Brody. Delali Dagadu. Luke Bachi Galupo. <laughs> Christina Lee. Diamond Ross. Yeah. 
LaShura Willametta Hall. Ajari Bowman. Dion Renee Dillard. Jaffa Mansu. <laughs> Lydia Teal. Mehmet Mehmet Asik Karosh Alexander Razazi. Nathan Jones. Stephanie Ajwa Arthur. Demarcus Freeman. Tatiana Hopkins. Chaz Franklin Hendricks. Cornelius Pope.
And that was the presentation of the candidates for the Juris Doctor degree. Each of you has been found by a vote of the faculty of the David A. Clark School of Law of the University of the District of Columbia to have satisfied all requirements needed for conferral of your degree. The conferral of degrees will take place tomorrow. Congratulations, graduates. And now let us stand for our university anthem, our glorious UDC. Be seated. Graduates, congratulations. <laughs> I cannot begin to express how happy I am for you. You all will always be a remarkably special class for me. We started together. We started together. And now here you are, three years later having accomplished all that you set out to accomplish. You did not just survive the tremendous adversity that was thrown your way, you thrived. You have helped to solidify a culture of excellence, a culture of giving back, and a culture of community here at UDC Law, and I thank you for that. I am so honored to have the privilege of welcoming you into the UDC Law alumni family and into the rank of Juris Doctor and into the bar later this summer. Um, I hope that you will remain engaged with us, I really do. Um, and I hope that you will set off to do all the amazing things that I know you have the capacity and the ability to accomplish. Congratulations, class of 2022, congratulations. <laughs> And now, Reverend Bowen with our benediction. Congratulations once again, graduates of the People's Law School. As it says in scripture, you understood the assignment. Frederick Douglass, that line of Anacostia, prayed for many of years, but he said he never received an answer to his prayers until at long last he prayed with his feet. He charged you to pray with your feet, pray with your hands, and to pray with your voice. To do as the prophet Amos tells us, to not only seek justice, but to chase it. And now, Go forth into the world in peace, seeking justice and loving mercy. Be of good courage in spite of the right. Hold fast that which is good. There's a bright side somewhere, and don't you dare stop until you find it. Strengthen the faint hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor everyone you see, for the same folk you pass going up the ladder, the same folks you pass coming down. Be true. To this school's motto, practice law, promote justice, 
and you go out there and change lives in a name that is above all other names, that name, your name, their names. Amen and Asha. VOG. Ladies and gentlemen, in a moment, our graduates and our guests on stage will recess out of the theater. Please remain seated for the entirety of the recessional and for the viewing of a congratulatory video. Congratulations, class of 2022. It has been an honor and a privilege to walk alongside you on this very tumultuous journey to your law degree. I cannot wait to see what you do out there as attorneys, and we are 100% behind you all the way. Congratulations. Well, I have only had the pleasure of getting to know you the last six months. In that short time, I have been inspired by your achievements, your resilience, and your ability to thrive in the midst of a global pandemic, an economic recession, a pivot to online learning, and the heightened racial violence against people of color. I'm impressed by your ability to have achieved the rank of Juris Doctor amongst all that adversity. I cannot wait to see what amazing things you accomplish in the future. Congratulations, Class of 2022. I am so proud of each and every one of you. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the UDC Law alumni family. Now that you are alumni, I expect you to do two things. One, shine your light as bright as you can. And two, every so often, take a look over your shoulder and see if you can lend a helping hand to make the journey a little bit easier for the students who are following in your footsteps. Congratulations again. Your education is a dress rehearsal for a life that is yours to lead. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you have imagined. Congratulations, class of 2022. I am so proud of you. When I stepped down as dean after 20 years, I returned to the law school, and I wasn't really looking forward to teaching particularly until I met you, my first class. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for that whole new chapter. Uh, since then, I've had a chance to work with so many of you on DC democracy issues and civil liberties issues. Uh, state and local government issues. It's been a joy. It has been an absolute joy. So I know that this class will practice law, promote justice, and change lives. 
I can't wait to see how you make your mark. Class of 2022, congratulations. I have seen so many of you work so hard to get where you are. You have studied, you have learned, you have challenged yourselves, and you are right where you belong today. You deserve this, and our profession deserves you. So go out and change the world. Greetings from Trento, Italy, class of 2022. Congratulations. You guys have made it through the pandemic and through all of other unforeseen challenges. I'm so proud of you guys and good luck in the future. And I know you're gonna change the world. I just wanna take this opportunity to say congratulations on your graduation. Law school is challenging in the best of times and you've had to navigate it through a pandemic and incredible social unrest. And you've done so with incredible determination and perseverance. You are the little engines that can. I look forward to watching all of your future successes. Congratulations, class of 2022. Congratulations, class of 2022. You are an amazing class. This is a fantastic achievement. Best of luck for the future. I'm so proud of you. You have overcome so many obstacles to get to this point in your legal career. You did it. Keep going, keep fighting for justice. I can't wait to continue to watch you all shine and soar. Congratulations, class of 2022, you did it. You survived two years of a pandemic, you did all your work and now you're finished. So I'm just looking forward to seeing what great things you're going to do in the next chapter. I can't wait to hear back. Congratulations, UDC Law graduates, class of 2022. It's been a real pleasure getting to know you these last few years and work with you. I can't wait to see how you use these degrees moving forward. Best of luck and congrats again. Congratulations to my wonderful students. You've made it and we are so proud of you. Hello everyone, I wanted to wish you congratulations on this enormous achievement and the past years of incredibly hard work and study. I also wanted to remind you to always remember why you went to law school in the first place and to never give up that fight for justice that brought you here. I hope you always remember UDC Law, and I look forward to seeing you on the other side as a licensed attorney. Congratulations, Class of 2022, um, on making it through this unprecedented time. I know that for many of you, you spent over half of your time in law school in a remote or hybrid situation. Um, I was so happy to see that you guys built community amongst yourselves and lifted up your fellow students to get through these tough times. So congratulations again. I look forward to staying connected with you as um, law school graduates, practicing attorneys, and UDC Law alum. Congratulations to all of you. I know you've worked hard for this and it's well deserved. And I've really enjoyed working with all of you. And I look forward to hearing about all the wonderful things I know you will do with your law degrees. And please do stay in touch. Our office, the Office of Career and Professional Development, works not only with students, but also alumni. So we'll be here to support you long after today. I'm so proud of you all for persevering through the pandemic and the special challenges of a virtual law school experience. I know that some of the greatest challenges still lie ahead for each of you. Passing the bar exam, finding the best position for you in the legal profession, learning to apply all the things you learned here, and finding the just the right work-life balance while keeping yourself and your families healthy and safe. Finally, a special thank you to those of you who joined me in the Ruth Bader Ginsburg seminar in the spring of 2021 and this past fall of 2021. You know how special that experience was for all of us. Congratulations to the class of 2022. As you set off to start your professional careers, I hope that you will always remember that you are a member of the Firebird family and always will be. Congratulations class of 2022 on achieving this accomplishment.